So with me now is Callie Means. He's the co-founder of TrueMed, but that is not what he has always done. He used to be a political operative. He used to consult actually for soda companies. Um, in 2011, he consulted for Coca-Cola to help keep uh, Coca-Cola included in SNAP benefits. So we're going to talk about this whole thing with him. Callie, good to see you. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, Liz. Okay, Callie, you have a really interesting background, and I want to talk a little bit about that, particularly as it ties in with the larger conversation that we're having about sugar, but specifically the sugar in soda. So soda is the number one purchased item, food item, on food stamps. Um, you say that you were in the room when Coca-Cola wanted to keep this, keep keep themselves, keep Coca-Cola included in uh, in in food stamps in 2012. Can you can you tell us about that? Yeah, this is a huge issue just on its face because 25% of kids now have prediabetes, which is decimating our human capital, our children. It, I think it's also instructive of what pharma, soda, other companies do to rig the system today. But yeah, they wanted to keep it's the number one item bought on food stamps, 110 billion dollar government program. They wanted to keep it that way. That obviously makes no sense. You know, sugar water, just no nutritional value, just goes directly to causing diabetes. And um, But how did they keep it that way? It's a three-legged stool that I saw. And again, I think this is being weaponized today, but it's all around weaponizing institutions of trust. So I was actually in the room uh, with Coke executives and the NAACP, the really the oldest, one of the most prominent civil rights organizations. And it was a quid pro quo. It's, we're going to give you millions of dollars, you, the NAACP, call our opponents racist. In this case, and there's contemporary reporting in the New York Times around 2012, the NAACP said that parents who were concerned about their kids drinking you know, and ingesting 100 times more sugar than they did 100 years ago were racist and classist. And it was an unrelenting campaign that shut down debate. Um, we also went and uh, paid off think tanks uh, from the Heritage Foundation to leading think tanks on the left. It was as transactional, you know, as ordering a hamburger at McDonald's. You just go in and order that study in the Heritage Foundation, which you know I interned with. I interned at early in my, you know, in college, and and it is the gold standard conservative think tank. It was disheartening to see that as really just a pay to play org um, that you just go in very transactional. And the third, and I actually think most most important, is research institutions. It was. It was shocking <laughs> that really research strategy for leading institutions in the United States was being dictated by public relations offices in Washington, D.C. There are lists of hundreds of professors who are friendly for various causes. And in this case, soda companies and processed food companies spend 11 times more nutritional research than the NIH. And this has been an absolute disaster. Um, you know, the food pyramid, the, the terrible guidance that's I believe has led to millions of unnecessary and early deaths in the 1990s was based on Harvard research that was paid for by the Sugar Foundation, it was called at the time. Uh, and up until today, the, the leading guidance from the NIH right now, uh, the Tufts NIH food compass, millions of dollars of government funding, also funded by food companies called the most comprehensive nutrition study ever conducted, is saying Lucky Charms is three times healthier for breakfast than eggs. So this would be funny if it wasn't impacting our children and it's not a good situation for our kids right now. Hi guys, it's Liz Wheeler. Don't forget to watch my show, The Liz Wheeler Show, every night at 7 p.m. on The First TV. You can download the free First TV app or you can visit thefirsttv.com slash Liz and start watching today.